So, hello to all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to do this webinar. It's my first webinar. And on behalf of the WPI uh, 5, Work Package Fair 5, on optimal design in mixed models, I'm going to present you the work done mainly by Florence, who is uh, sitting, uh, Florence has to say hello here. She's a postdoc paid full time by Ideal Project. And on behalf of Tutuis here, who is a research engineer in my group, who has put a lot of effort also in developing this work. There are other authors, Marie Carrel Rivière, who was also a postdoc from Ideal during the first year of the project, Julia Lestini, a PhD student, Sébastien Huckert, a postdoc, both paid by Didi Moore, which has also some links with Ideal. So it's really the, uh, some of the results that we obtain with WP5. And I'm going to focus on the result we got on using Hamiltonian Monte Carlo to design clinical trials with longitudinal data. Sorry, I'm making mistake. I don't know how to, to go to the next slide, so, no. Okay, so the context, I'm sorry, I'm saying that, I'm saying to my, I'm not going to do that like that. Okay, sorry. So the contents of the talk will be first an introduction, then we will show you the new methods we have developed for computation of the theme, feature information metrics, and their application to both a binary and a con data example. And then most recent extension we have done to perform robust designs and their applications, and the illustration will be on corn data. So first, remember that we have several work package in IDEAL, and several work package are devoted to design optimization, and our work package, WP5, is focusing on optimal design for mixed models. So you all know that for the last decades, there have been several methods and software that were developed for maximum likelihood estimation of what we call population parameters for those longitudinal data using nonlinear mixed effect models or generalized linear mixed effect models. And today we're focusing on the problem before N, which is a choice of what we call the population design, which is the number of individuals the number of samples or sampling times per individual, the allocation of the sampling times, and when I say sampling times, those variables could be other design variables like doses. And why is it important to get a good design? Because we all know that the choice of the design will influence the precision of the estimates and also the power to detect an effect. This could be done by clinical trial simulation, but this could be quite time consuming. And that is why we often use the asymptotic theory and compute the expected feature information metrics, which is a feature information metrics that we expect to get before doing the experiment. And after doing the experiment, what we have is usually an observed feature information matrix. And from this expected feature information metrics, you can derive the predicted standard error or relative standard error when you divide them by the value to get a more coefficient of variation and the power. And you can use it to compare and or to optimize design. So the question is to get an analytical expression of this theme in nonlinear mixed effect models. The current approach in the software PFIM that was developed by our lab, but also in other design software, like for instance POPED, developed by Uppsala University, who is a leader of one of the work package, was based on the first order linearization of the model around the expectation of the random effect, FO, also called MQL in the stat literature. This approach will work for continuous data and perform well 
but could have severe limitation when the model is very nonlinear and when there is large interpatient variability. That is why we have developed new approaches for computation of the theme which avoid model linearization. Those approaches can be applied both for continuous and discrete data. And we have developed in our group two approaches. One which is a Monte Carlo adaptive Gaussian quadrature. And this is following the work done by Tutkui and Guyen. We've extended that work with Sebastian Uckert. And another one which is using Monte Carlo and Hamiltonian Monte Carlo or an MCMC approach. And this is where work was done by Marie Carel Rivière and totally sponsored by IDEAL and published in Biostatistics this year. And today, I will focus mainly on this approach. Another problem we have when we do optimal design is, as you know, we have to pre-specify or specify a priori the model and the values of the parameters. So this is called local planification, where the model M is given, and a priori value of the parameter, psi star M, are given. And then, usually optimization is done by computing d-optimality, which is the determinant of the Fisher matrix which, which we try to maximize. An alternative, is to use robust design or robust design optimization where we could take into account uncertainty on the parameters, so prior distribution on the parameters, and or also pre-specified a set of candidate models instead of one model. So I now move to the second part where I will show you briefly how we compute this new theme, but show you mainly the result compared to a clinical trial simulation and the results using this approach for doing optimal design for a binary example and for a con data example. In both cases, it's linear, it's mixed effect models for longitudinal data. So, Again, rather briefly, because this is all explained in the paper in biostatistics by Riviere and all, the population feature information matrix M of psi and capital psi is equal to N times the elementary feature information matrix. And this in the case where all the patients will have the same design psi. So I focus here in a, an example where all patients have the same design, but of course the extension could be done very easily to various elementary design. The elementary Fisher matrix is given by this formula, as usual, where we see here, this is the expected Fisher information matrix, so a first expectation on the data Y. Inside the expression, we have the likelihood here, and this likelihood is an integral over the uh, random effect B. And in nonlinear mixed effect models, this likelihood has no analytical expression. So we have two integrals to compute one which is the expectation over Y, which was in blue, and one which is the expectation over B which was in red. In the two approaches we developed, we simulate and use standard Monte Carlo to compute the first part by simulated observation out of the model. And for the second part, the integral on B, on the random effect, we can use either adaptive Gaussian quadrature, either Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, HMC, is a specific MCMC approach, Monte Carlo Markov chain approach, that is implemented in the software STAN, that is developed by the STAN development team, and which is supposed to be more powerful than standard MCMC, 
and that we used here. So for that, we had to develop our R code, both are written in R, and to link our code to STAN and STAN for R. So first, we evaluated both approach by, by clinical trial simulation on two examples. The first example, it's an example of longitudinal binary response where we have a logistic model for a repeated binary response over time. And we have, we assume that we have two group of patients mean by delta. When delta equals zero, we are in the control group. And delta equals one, we are in the treatment group. And the logit, the probability of response, is given by beta one, an intercept, plus beta two time. So beta two is the slope of the increase of the response versus time. And mu three is the influence of the treatment effect. In absence of treatment, it's beta one plus beta two t. With treatment, is beta one plus beta two times mu three t. Here you have example of the kind of data, which are yes, no, that we could observe here in two patients which are in the control group, and here in two patients which are in the treatment group. We assume that each beta is a fixed effect plus a random effect with a normal distribution. And we assume that we observe the patient during one year, so 12 months. So we have t, the observation times, which are equally spaced between 0 to 12. We assume that we have 50 subjects per treatment group. And these are the parameters for mu1, mu2, mu3, variability on mu1, variability on mu2. And here are the standard deviation. This is our first example. The second example is a count response. So it's a repeated count response for several dose levels for each patient. So we're using here a Poisson model. So here is a probability of y equal k given b, which depends on a parameter lambda. And we assume that log lambda is given by this model, where beta 1 is the intercept when the dose is equal to zero. And there is here a dose response model where lambda or the number of uh, count decrease with dose. And here we have dose divided by dose plus beta two. So beta two is a D50. So each patient it ob is observed during 30 days, for instance, and each day we count the number of events. And each patient has 30 days of observation during dose 0, dose 0 0.4, and dose 0 0.7. And we expect the dose to decrease the number of events we assume that we have 20 subjects with 30 replications per subject. So as I said, 30 days or months of observation. And here are the two fixed effects and variability on the random effects. We compared several ways to compute the theme. First, using MC-HMC, using the package developed by Barry Carrel mixed film, which is available on CRAN and called STAN, and that you can freely use. We use different values for the number of MC, 1,000 or 5,000, and different values for the number of HMC, 200 or 1,000. But we also wanted to compare to MC AGQ, implemented in R. This is not yet freely available, but you can ask us the code. And the Laplace approximation, which is the same as an AGQ, assuming only one node. 
And we compare that to a clinical trial simulation, where for each example, we've simulated 1,000 data set with the true parameters. For each data set, we estimated the parameters using monoliths. Indeed, monoliths, but other software like NonMem can fit both binary longitudinal data or count longitudinal data. And we compare the observed relative standard error and root mean squared error by CTS to the predicted relative standard error from the expected Fisher information matrix. This is the result for the binary example, where in gray you have the relative standard errors or RRMSE predicted or observed, sorry, by clinical trial simulation for the three fixed effects and the two variances. In red, light or dark, you have the prediction using HMC. And in yellow, the prediction using adaptive Gaussian quadrature or Laplace approximation. One is brown and one is yellow. And you could see that they all give very good prediction of what we would get if we would have done a clinical trial simulation. So perhaps the Laplace approximation, but I think they're very close here. That's the binary example. When we go for the count data example, we have here the same graphs. You could see here that for the fixed effect, all approach, all approaches, sorry, are very close to the clinical trial simulation. For the vari variances, they are quite close, except for this variance, which is quite difficult to estimate because we have a large RSE, where we see here that the Laplace approximation does not perform well. But we are very happy about all the results of both the AGQ method and the MCMMC method. Because of that, we said we could use those methods to perform design optimization. So for the binary example, we fixed some constraint, 100 patients, one replication, four sampling times per patient. We fixed that we want to have an observation at time zero, beginning of the study, and time 12, 12 months, end of the study. And we want to optimize where to measure time two and time three, which could be any time between one and 11 months by step of one without repetition, so that T2 and T3 should be different. For that, we did not a very fancy optimization. We evaluated all the feature, all the feature information matrices for all the possible combination using quasi Monte Carlo and three AGQ nodes. For this approach, we use AGQ. For the other example, the count example, we assume that we have 60 subjects, 10 replications of 10 days of observation per subject, three doses. We fix that all patients will have the zero dose or the placebo dose, and that the other patients will have dose from 0.1 to 1. So those two and those three should be from 0.1 to 1 by step of 0.1 without repetition. And for this approach, we use 5,000 MC and 200 HMC. So these are the results for the discrete data example. This is an heat map where the, fixed time, the first time and the last time 0 and 12 are fixed. And you see on the heat map the D criterion, red is better because you want to have a high criterion, yellow is bad, 
And you see here how the criterion varies when the second dose varies from 1 to 11 and the first dose varies from 1 sorry the third dose from 1 to 11 and you could see here that having both high dose is quite bad where having lower dose is good and the optimum here is for these times sorry sorry I made a mistake this is not dose this is time the next example is dose sorry so I say it again this is the second time this is the third time you see that if both sampling times are late we have a poor information and it's much better to have early sampling times and the better is to have sampling times of two and three months and the 12 months for the next example we fix the first dose to be zero and this is again an heat map where we have the D criterion and this is the influence of the second dose and this time it's really a dose vary from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 not to 1 sorry and the third dose and you see here that having very low dose is not very good for the second dose and we see the influence of the two dose and we see that the optimal design is 0 0.4, 0 0.5 which are two very close dose to 0 0.5 so to conclude on this section we have developed new methods to compute the Fisher information matrix in these generalized nonlinear mixed effect models avoiding first order approximation we've proposed first uh, Monte Carlo adaptive Gaussian quadrature approach and second uh, Monte Carlo Hamiltonian Monte Carlo approach both can be used for continuous data but also for discrete nonlinear mixed effect models we have high agreement with the clinical trial simulation and these new tools can be used for designing studies and especially in small group patients and you could use the MixFIM package which is available on CRAN and which calls Stan to perform HMC and to our knowledge this is the first time that we applied this tool to perform design optimization and to show the influence of sampling times or of the dose on the Fisher information matrix and predicted standard errors so I now move to the third section of the talk which is how we extended those approach to robust designs and application and I will illustrate here only on corn data so as I have said when you do design optimization you have to choose your model and you have to choose the values of the parameters so a first way to be robust is instead of giving one value psi stars to the parameter is to define a distribution P of psi for the parameters and then you could try to find a design robust across parameters then you can compute what we have called MR which is a robust Fisher information matrix which is the expectation over psi of the Fisher information matrix that you would get for each psi so remember to compute M we had two integral one with respect to Y one with respect to B and now we are adding a third integral which is with respect to Psi and this is a new development the way we've done that is using again MC HMC in Stan but the first step the integral of Y on Y is done jointly by the integration on Y and Psi so it's a direct extension of the previous methods which was available in mixed film but, but this approach is not yet available in the CRAN packages package then 
we can try to find the optimal robust design and we call that the DE criterion because it's the determinant of the expected feature matrix, DE. And the design Psi DE is the one who maximizes this new criteria or maximizes the determinant of this robust feature matrix to the power 1 over P, where P is the number of population parameter in the model. This is robust, that was robust test across parameters. We can be also robust across model. Assume that we, you have defined a set of capital M candidate models. For each model, you can compute the D criteria, which is the determinant of the Fisher matrix for that model M given the values of the parameter psi star m using the number of parameter pm. So for each model, you could get a different optimal design. But if you don't know which model is going to be the good model, a good design is to use a compound D criterion, as was proposed by Anthony Atkinson and used already by Tutu and Guillain in another work. And the compound design is a product of all models of the criteria to the power alpha m, where alpha m is the weight quantifying the balance between your prior belief between the m models. So as the criterion is to the power 1 over p, the new compound criteria is the product of all the determinants to the product to the power alpha m divided by pm. Again, to do that, we use mixfim, an extension of mixfim, to evaluate the robust film using MC MCMC, and we combine several models. I'm going to show you, uh, sorry, we're going to show, illustrate those approaches on the previous COM data example. First, uncertainty on parameters, and we can compute the loss of efficiency if you do the optimal design or if you do robust design, which is called DE efficiency. Then I'm going to show you robust across models. We will have shown here that all the alpha m equal 1 divided by m, so that we don't have any specific choice of a model. They're all equally probable. And I'm going to show you the efficiency of each optimal design for each model versus the robust design, which is here, a compound the optimal design, a CD design. For the uncertainty on the parameters, everything is the same for the Poisson model and the distribution and the model of log lambda with respect to those. That was the value that we used before, but now we assume that we have uncertainty on mu2 and omega2, which are the uncertainty on the D50. We assume a log normal distribution, both for mu2 and for omega2. And again, we did the optimization as before, 60 patients, 10 repetitions per patient, the first dose fixed to zero, and the dose D3 and D3, D2 and D3 varies from 0 0.1 to 1. Those are the results. Here you can see two heat maps. The one on the left is the heat map as before, using standard D optimality. But now we've changed the scale, and here you see D efficiency. So one is the best. It's for this design. And you see how it decreases. 
And on the right, this is the D efficiency. It is sorry, it's the D E efficiency or the robust efficiency from one the best to 0 0.75. And you could see here that the optimal doses for the robust criteria are 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, whereas the optimal doses for the standard D optimality were 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And you could also see that the heat map doesn't look the same. For instance, for the robust design, having both high doses is not very good, whereas for the standard D optimal design, it's not that bad. What we compute in the last table here is the loss of efficiency if you use the wrong design. For instance, if you use, instead of the optimal DE efficient, the D design, you're going to lose some efficiency and you're going to get 95% of efficiency. So it's not a great loss. But it's just to illustrate the approach and show that using the prior uncertainty on the parameter, you will get a different optimal design. Let's move now to the application to different models. Here we have assumed four different candidate models. The first one is the one we used before. It's a model where log lambda is equal to beta 1 times a function of d. So you could see that for the four model, we have beta 1, which is the effect, which is log lambda when d equals 0. So beta 1 is going to be the same for all models. What differs is the effect of dose. In model 1, we have an Emax model, and beta 2 is a D50. In model 2, we have a linear model with dose, and beta 2 is a slope. In M3, we have a log linear model, or a model with log dose. And model 4, is again an Emax model, but we have an additional parameter, beta 3, here, which is like an Imax, which was assumed to have no random effect, but to be equal to 0 0.8. The curves are the curves predicted by the, for the fixed effects. We have assumed to choose the values of beta 1, of beta 2, that all log lambda will be the same for those 0, which is given by beta 1, so beta 1 is the same. But for to choose beta 2, we have assumed that the effect, the response, the log lambda, is the same for those equal 1. That is the way we have created this example. So same response at those 0 and those 1, but the shape are different. So we use this first. We want to find what, is the, what are the optimal doses for each model. And this is shown in that slide. Here, you see for each model and heat map, where you see the D efficiency, and it decreases when you change the second dose or the third dose. The first graph, we already seen it. It's the optimal doses for our Emax design, Emax model, 0.4 and 0.5. But you see here that for the linear model or the log linear model, the optimal doses are 0.1 and 0.9 and 1. So very large doses the largest doses available. And you see here that for the model with an Emax, so an additional parameter, the optimal design is here, 0.2 and 1. And very interestingly, you could see here that this design here is very not efficient for this model here. 
So you see that changing the model, change the optimal design, and change the heat map. In that slide here, we have computed what if again, what would happen if you use the optimal design for model one, but the model was M2. Your efficiency compared to the optimal is 60%. But worse, if you find the optimal design for model M1, but at the end your model is M4, you have a loss of efficiency of 50%. It means that all your variances will be increased by a factor 2. So really a loss in precision. If you were to use design for model M2 and at the end the model is 4, you have a loss of efficiency of 30%, which has very high loss. So we see here the importance of the model to choose the optimal design. And if you're wrong on your choice of the model, you can have a bad design. That is why we propose to perform compound the optimal design. And if we perform compound the optimal design, here are the results. Remember, I have assumed that the probability of each model is 1 4, 1 divided by 4, 1 fourth, because I don't know which model to choose. And we found that for the compound the optimal criteria, here again the efficiency, the optimal design is this one, 0.2 and 1, which is indeed the optimal design for model M4. This was not an expected result, but this is what we observed here. The optimal design is for model M4. And is this design good? Yes. Because indeed, if you perform this compound design, and if at the end the true model is M1, the loss of efficiency is 88%. If it's M2, it's 85%. M3, 85%. And of course, if it's M4, it's 100% because it's the same design. So by using this approach, we found a design that is rather robust across the four models. And it's better to use than the M1 model or the M2, M1 design or M2 design or M3 design. So to conclude on this section, we've proposed methods for robust design for discrete longitudinal data models. We use an extension of the air package in MixFIM to compute the DE optimality, or the determinant of the expected theme across the values of the parameters. We also propose to use a compound optimality criteria to combine several candidate models. We find very interesting results so that we really think that MCHMC it's a relevant approach and we have allowed for the first time to compute robust design for repeated cone data. We found that the using robustness across parameters, the optimal design was different than assuming a mean value. And again, we found that using the compound the optimal design, the optimal design is a good compromise across the four candidate models. Of course, your question should be, what about combining both? First part, we have uncertainty on parameters. Second part, we have uncertainty on models, but with given values of the parameters. And indeed, our ongoing work, and I hope to show you results soon, is to combine uncertainty on the models and uncertainty on the parameters and find the best design across all those uncertainties. So I want to now to discuss those results. The summary is that we have developed new methods for computation of the theme, avoiding first order approximation. There are relevant methods to do optimal design for 
discrete longitudinal data. You, the tool using HMC is available in our air package. Yes, it is more computationally challenging than using the first order approximation, but it's more exact and it's one of the few approaches that you could use if you have discrete longitudinal data. We are working on extension of these methods for robust optimal design with uncertainty on parameters and or on models. And all the developments that I've shown today will be available one day in the MixFing package. There is still some other improvement to do. In the MCHMC, the first part is a standard Monte Carlo. And it could be more efficient to use quasi-random sampling instead of a Monte Carlo sampling. And mainly, I think I would like or we would like to work on adaptive designs. So we want to do to work on adaptive robust designs. And one of the nice adaptive designs are the two-stage design. They were developed and proposed by Julia Lestini and Cyril Dumont and myself for, discrete, for continuous data. And we want to extend them to discrete data and to compute the design of the first cohort. We could be robust with respect to parameters and model, launch the first cohort of patients, especially in small groups, estimate parameters and estimate the weight of each model and design the second cohort. I thank you for your attention and I'm open for any questions that you might have. And I want really to congratulate Florence, Tutui, and Marie Carrel for all the statistical work that they have performed for this work package. Any comments? Any questions? So I assume it was all very clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh... I, I, I was not I was not reading all the comments. Thank you, Diane, for your comments. I think it was clear. Okay. Okay, I have two important questions here. Oh, no. Thank you for your nice comments, all of you. So what is my recommendation? Always use the new MC or keep linearization of the film. I, I don't... Okay, linearization, you could do it only with continuous data. If you have discrete models, count, binary, time to events, I will not use any linearization, not even the Laplace. I think you have to go to these new tools if you have discrete data. For me, there is no question. For the continuous models, the result we got, I'm not, I didn't show them here, they're very similar. So for continuous, like more standard PKPD example, I think that I will still use the linearization. That will be my first comment to Camille question. 
Then I have to answer to Su Jane question. So has the approach applied to any small population clinical development? To my knowledge, no. It's new tools that we just recently developed. Of course, every, this work is under the paradigm that if you have a small population, you want to use all the data, though then you will use longitudinal data and nonlinear mixed effect models. That is a prerequisite of our work. But then, if you want to do that and use all the data and use modeling to perform inference in small groups, you have to design your study and you have to use those approaches. But to my knowledge, it has not been applied to a true example yet, at least not by us. I don't know, perhaps by other groups. Uh, runtime differences. I forgot. Uh, in in the paper of Marie Carrel, I think, or in the paper of Sébastien, we have the runtime uh, for the continuous example. For instance, for the cone data, to evaluate one design on our cluster, it will take one hour. I think it's still less than clinical trial simulation, where you have to simulate, fit by monoliths or anything, compute. But it's one hour for one design. So if you want to do design optimization, it will take more time. So it's not, I couldn't say, Camille, it's quickly computed. It is not quickly computed. But I think it's good enough with respect to the amount of money you're going to spend on a study. Thank you, Camille.